Hi, my name is Zach Whitehill. I'm an account manager uh, for Burris Seed Company. I cover Western Missouri. Currently, I'm standing in front of the Burris Showcase plot located on Grimes Family Farms, just outside of Osborne, Missouri. Um, this plot was planted June 3rd at 30,000 population, had 160 pounds of anhydrous put on, uh, no fungicide, no side dressing or top dressing. Our first hybrid in the plot is 4F71. That's 109 day, um, kind of known for its quick emergence. We have another 108 day, 4Y34, and the kind of the thing that separates those is 4F71, we want to put on the 175 bushel uh, APH and above ground, 4Y34, we want to place on the 175 bushel and below uh, ground. Now we're in front of 5H23, which is a 110 day uh, hybrid, really solid agronomics for its maturity. Um, this replaces an, an older hybrid, 5K33, that was really a really popular hybrid in our lineup. Um, we're bringing very strong grade leaf tolerance uh, with this hybrid, um, placed on lighter to moderate soils and handles stress very well and uh, is also known for its, its green snap tolerance and root strength. Uh, both of those, it's rated at a nine. Now we're in front of 6G34, which is a 112 day hybrid. Um, you'll notice on 6G34, there's gonna be a little bit of yellowing at the top of the plant. It's a, it's a early maturing hybrid for 112 day. Um, again, very solid agronomics. Uh, in a lot of the plots that we've been in this year where there is some gray leaf pressure, uh, we're not seeing it near as prevalent in 6G34. Um, we've got a lot of it out there this year. And in my opinion, it should probably be a part of every portfolio or every package that we put together. Now we're in front of 6C43, which is another 112 day product for us. Uh, this is gonna be a shorter plant type, uh, go anywhere type product. And it really hides its yield and, and where it gets its yield is through consistency of the year, the girth of the year, and primarily through test weight of the year. Last year across five plots in Missouri, um, this product averaged about 236 bushel an acre. Now we're standing in front of 6J92, which is a new product for us this year. This is a 113 day hybrid. Our recommendations on this is that it only goes on your, your very best ground. Um, it's a highly managed hybrid or needs to be highly managed. Um, extremely fertile ground. Um, so around that 200, 110 bushel an acre and up is where we're gonna recommend placing this. Um, as we can see from the ear size, we expect uh, some, some really good yields out of it this year. Um, it's uh, highly responsive to fungicide. And, and like I said earlier, we're just gonna wanna treat this um, with everything we have. Now we're staying in front of 7R42, which is a new hybrid for us this year. It's 114 day. And what we want to keep in mind with 7R42 is that it brings forth uh, two modes of action. There's two corn borer traits, two broad lep traits. Uh, it's really known for its agronomics. It's, it's a lot of double roots this year, um, good gray leaf tolerance. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's one of the, the best values for the money um, out of the entire lineup. Now we're staying in front of 7K64, which is a product that we're really excited about this year. It's a 115 day hybrid. Um, and it replaces 7M83. There's some people that were a little upset they didn't see 7M83 in the product catalog this year. Uh, this hybrid uh, out yielded it last year by an average of 9.1 bushel an acre. Um, it's got it's a drought guard product, which is a which is a trait on this product. Um, so it's rated a 10 for drought tolerance. Um, and it, it's like I said, it's basically a go anywhere product. You can put it about anywhere. Uh, it's gonna put on cookie cutter ears and stay very consistent through geographies. Now we're standing in front of 7W63, which is another 115 day hybrid for us. This product wants to be placed on your moderate to better grounds. It is a flexier hybrid, so we can adjust populations depending on, on soil types. Um, it's an early silker for its range of maturity. Um, and there is a grain premium potential with it. Uh, and also, just as kind of a side note, it's rated at a nine for silage. Um, it's gonna have a, a moderately tall uh, plant type and again, a moderately tall uh, ear height as well. Now we're standing in front of 8A12, which is a 116 day hybrid for us. Kind of the mantra on this one is first planted, last harvested. This is gonna come with one of the strongest agronomic packages in our entire lineup and the heaviest test weight out of the entire lineup. Um, as an example, 
last year across five plots in Missouri. This one averaged 246 bushel an acre. Um, and you can place it on about any soils, but even light to moderate soils, it does really well. So that wraps up our corn lineup. And as you can see, we've got a, a very strong product portfolio this year. Everything from 108, 109 day, all the way up to 116 with several 112 and 115 day above traded products uh, scattered throughout. Now we're gonna move down to the south side of the plot um, and go over our E3 Enlist bean lineup. Um, so I'll see you guys down there. Well, welcome everyone. I'm Dana Harderfield Agramas for Burris Seed. I cover Missouri and Western Illinois. We're really excited to have you here to introduce our bean lineup. We'll be covering the Enlist lineup, but we have many other technologies that'll best fit your operation and allow you to choose a technology that'll work for you. Our first soybean variety is 3642E. Um, as you notice, it'll be the Burris brand. With this soybean, it's gonna be a really tall, bushy bean. It's gonna be dark green and really solid looking across variable soils. It's a really good fit if you have light to dark soils. Um, from our data last year, the 3756 Don Mario did a really good job for us with tops in the first trial. We're providing equivalent yield, but this bean can go a lot of different locations. Where the 3756, we'd probably place that bean on our better soils. Our next soybean is Don Mario 3756E. Again, this had a fantastic year last year in Missouri First Trials, University of Missouri, and Illinois Trials. So really bringing dominant performance, the number one bean in many breakouts. We think 3756 is going to be a shorter plant type, so we want to put that bean on your better soils. We want to keep those populations around 130, 140, and 15-inch beans. In terms of agronomics, it has very good SDS tolerance, good, good agronomics all the way up and down. So a really dominant bean. Uh, really short plant type, but will kick out the yield and deliver for you come fall. Our next soybean is Burst 3803. So bringing a key maturity to you guys. When you think about 3803, it's a true placement bean. We want to target the better acre that's well drained. And we want to pair 3803 with our PSSDS seed treatment. It's a little weaker on SDS, but will more than make up with yield and performance come fall. The 3756, which did a really good job for us last year, with the 3803, we're, we're bringing two bushels more an acre. And when you see that difference in research data, that's huge. So we're bringing a new level of performance. Our next variety is Don Meyer 3932. This is the second year for this variety. Last year's first trials, University of Missouri trials, this bean was dominant performance. It came in number two. The only reason it came in number two is because 3756 came out on top. As we go south, you'll see the performance of 3932 maybe exceed 3756 as we get closer to the I-70. This bean's really a go anywhere bean. You can't mess it up. So when it's a spring that's really wet and you can't remember your placement plan, this soybean can go on any acre. Really tall, really wide, and it'll do a good job for you. Sound agronomically and good SDS scores. Here we're in front of Don Mario 42E21. You might not have saw it in the first or university trials last year, but again, it had really good year in our research data. It came in about a bushel over the 3932, which had a great year. This bean can go on any acre. It's a tall plant type, really big canopy, so it'll get up and going and outcompete those weeds. Our next soybean is Don Mario 43E51, a brand new launch for us. When you think the 4.3, think solid agronomics, good frog eye scores. It's a really tall and bushy plant. It's also always good to sprinkle in a few late maturity beans because you know in the state of Missouri, one out of every five years we might have a drought and we're waiting for those hurricane rains to come in and fill out those soybeans. Good frog eye scores, so we're keeping those leaves intact. We're filling out those pods and providing more yield at harvest time. Again, the 4.3, our research data would suggest that maybe this could be the highest yielding bean in our, our lineup. And with sound agronomics and good SDS scores, it'll be a win-win for you come fall. I wanna take this time to talk a little bit about our power shield seed treatment. With our power shield seed treatment, we got three fungicides and one insecticide. When we think about PSSDS, again, we made the move to Saltro. Um, and when we did that, you know, if our own testing data suggested that we're maybe we're seeing a half bushel advantage over a Levo. Again, as a whole through our testing, we're seeing a 2.8 bushel advantage with PSSDS as a whole over our standard power shield. And we want to target the varieties in which we have lower SDS scores and provide that protection.
real quick, I'd just like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, hopefully you got a good idea of what we have to offer in regard to products of our corn hybrids and our uh, bean maturities. We do offer uh, the Extend bean and the Enlist E3 bean. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach me on my cell phone at 816-872-0875. Or if you'd like to schedule a private tour of the plot, again, we're just outside of Osborne, Missouri. You can contact Gerald at 816-632-9202. Thanks again, and we hope to see you in the near future.